Somebody told me once. I'm betting $10,000 at the end of this sentence is not never to start an animated movie with a disembodied narration. The dad character is obsessed with discovering a secret tiny civilization, and this movie totally skips over the reality that there is existing technology that could be recording this moment from his helmet. Snap a picture of the tiny bird with a harness and go prove your theories. <laughs> Holy <laughs> amphibian Urukai are apparently more terrifying than anything Tolkien imagined. Fall, bounce, twist, bend, dodge, leap, pose, excitement. Why wouldn't the crow find a place to land after Ronan jumps on him to fight? This is as dumb as all the cars continuing to drive down the interstate during a car chase in an action movie. These boggins fall off their mounts without any struggle. You'd think if they fly regularly and they valued their life, they'd at least have a tiny parachute. Whoa! Damn, it's the end of Magnolia. I assume this cab driver and the rest of the cast are gonna start wistfully singing Wise Up in a few minutes. She talks! Something on your mind, kid? Chatty cab drivers. Chatty f***ing cab drivers. That, that's not a house. That's termites holding hands. No offense. F*** you, taxi man. This house isn't perfect, but it's a lush, historic mansion in the middle of a beautiful forest section. There are a lot of unrealistic things about this movie, but perhaps the worst is that Larry the cab driver drives off without getting paid. Ah, yes, just leave the door open. Did you hear the symphony of insects outside the door? Close the door! I've been reading up on the five stages of grief. What the f***ing purpose does this dead mom plotline have to the general story of goddamn leaf men fighting boggins and riding birds and sh all your things are here, you know, you got your dolls, and uh, your pictures, uh, your turtle, uh, oh dear. Are we to believe that there's a dead turtle in a terrarium in the corner of the room, having died of starvation and neglect, filling the air with its rotting turtle stank all these years? There's dad who likes to collect dead nature things, and then there's dad who should be examined by medical professionals. Now the dialogue in this scene is not helping me decide which category he should be in. If this room is the same as she left it in her childhood, why does she have adult-sized skates? MK's too big for her childhood bed, fine, but it really should only be the width that's the problem, right? Twin bed for a kid is still the same size as a twin bed for an adult. So, unless she's the height of Gwendolyn Christie, she should easily be able to stretch her legs out. Nice! It's been a while since we dusted off the old zoom and enhance cliche. Ah, like slipping into an old pair of jeans. The next ten minutes of the movie are these hummingbirds flying straight up this f***ing waterfall, and I think the animators thought we'd all be more entertained by that. Come with me, and you'll be in a world of cheesy animation. I suppose now is as good a time as any to point out that this movie never explains why some plants come to life and other plants stay boring. Well, I think he looks silly kneeling too. Come on, man, you cast Beyonce as a literal f***ing Queen? Isn't that a little on the nose? All in the name of balance. I'm sick of balance. Fox News. Today we'll show them you just can't stop the rods. I don't know, this just has less impact when you consider that a tiny green shoot has managed to grow directly in the center of their putrid bog of eternal stench. I'm your commanding officer. Not anymore. I quit. Okay, the research work, the father-daughter dynamic, the three-legged dog, the queen and her pod heir, her lady boner for Ronan, the king and his son, the battle between the species, workplace drama, magical shrinkage. This movie already has roughly 936 storylines, only 1.5 of which are actually necessary. This float has entirely too many strings attached to dragonflies. Do you know how unnecessarily dangerous this is for the dragonfly's delicate wings? Have you ever seen one? Just because you haven't seen something doesn't mean it's not there. Organized religion. You have to catch these things in, in the moment while they're happening. Oh, uh-huh. Sort of like what would happen with a video recorder. MK's dad leaves to investigate whatever may be triggering his tiny people alarms. And she is immediately done with living here. She got in one little fight, got distraught and real flared, but if she'd stayed, they'd be okay from this plot, I'd be spared. Bye, Oswald. It's not you. This bull fake out of MK leaving the house is such a dick. It's only been 20 minutes, asshole. We know she's not going anywhere. It's a shame no one ever told these leaf men that there are pieces of equipment specifically designed to hold arrows. Even the animators realized they had grossly overdone it with the dragonfly strings, and suddenly we've gone from about 3,692 strings to only three. Okay, I already noted that the queen thing was on the nose, but having Beyonce's character literally walking on water is a bridge too far. Mom, can I be queen when I grow up? Oh, honey, it doesn't work that way. Turns out it actually does work that way, and nobody in this universe understands a goddamn thing. Do you have a favorite? Boom! Right here. How about that one? I mean, why ask Mub and Grub for their opinion on pods when you take a look at their choice, ignore it, and reroute to a nearby alternative? If you know what pod you're gonna choose, just pick it and move on. Sometimes the biggest Ow. one isn't the best one. He just yanks the pod out of the water and the movie carries on as if this plant didn't need to be in the water. Sure, they say that Grub Hub keep it moist, but we only see them hold it much later. I'm saying this pod should be dead. You know, if this queen is this powerful, why doesn't she take a lot of the boggins out? Like, do the handy-wavy thing and collapse a whole tree on those mother****. 
I have to lead them away from the crowd! What crowd? The spectators were all up at Fairy Top Mountain, and the people closest are the warriors attempting to protect her. Sure, the tension builds more intensely when she veers off from the pack, but it makes no sense to leave your guard in a situation like this. She deserves to die! What is this? A Red Dead Redemption wild RP server moment here? How can one bird hear a tiny whistle in this chaos? So maybe you were right. Remind me to gloat later. This Battle flirting drives me crazy. I don't mind Gimli and Legolas bantering about how many people they killed during the fighting because it focuses on the task at hand. This sh feels more like Thor telling Cap that he copied his beard during the battle for half the f***ing universe in Infinity War. MK clearly went to the Fantastic Four school of grabbing random alien nature sh with your bare hands. Listen carefully. If a tiny fairy creature gives you a glowing pod in the woods at night, you are not obligated to hang tightly to it as it whips you into branches and threatens your very existence. You can let go. We don't know anything about the pod without Tara. Smart. You know, because so many civilizations thrive when only one person knows how to continue forward and then that person dies. We are the official pod caretakers, sir. Which is f***ing dumb, considering slugs and snails will drown in water. No other rules, nobody telling you what to do. Nod is telling us why he loves racing and forgets that this race was supposed to be rigged. And there are rules, and there are people telling him what to do. Yeah, prove it. Cartoon character pulls comically large object from impossible places cliche. I'd buy that he has the cold cuts and the mayo handy, but there is no way in God's green f this absent-minded Professor Bachelor has a head of lettuce this fresh. Dear Dad, I was here for 12 minutes and got mad when you didn't abandon your life's work to talk to me immediately. My lack of patience and short-sightedness has driven me to the realization that I should show you how easy it is to abandon things you love. Goodbye, your selfish kid, MK. Is this, this whole bird riding thing's new to me? Oh, we gotta fix that. Here, put your arms around me. MK still has some weirdness with her new world, which makes sense, but why is Nod so nonchalant about MK? Has he ever met a regular human? I thought all the creatures in this forest were bugs and sticks and flowers, other than the leaf men. Wow, that's a lot of crows. I mean, if there's ever a moment where the bad guys need to really f up a light source or something, this murderer would murder at that. Ah, shit, Peter's hiding from danger underground again. I guess this means he's about to paint himself up like a goddamn tree. Oh, it's a mess! Things Fievel lovers say in their adult life when they wrongly believe that mice should be adored, fed, clothed, and kept as pets. Danae. Aw, man. Now let's move. Ignoring an obvious concussion on a woman who's holding the key to your whole existence. What's wrong, flat face? Are you gonna cry? I'm gonna be honest with you right now. I'm sending this scene so that I can use it later for an outtake in another video because this is hilarious. It's sending it is how I show I care. There really should be a discourse about the rate and risk of deforestation, and how this allegory examines the underlying motivations of big business, which, given the practicality of keeping shareholders happy, must utilize and therefore deplete our natural resources. Now the elasticity of a planet that's over 4.5 billion years old cannot be overstated. And, hang on, what the f*** am I doing? Must have gone into a fugue state or something. Gotta recover. Um, this line of deforestation looks like my college girlfriend after she got back from her waxing appointment. <laughs> Nailed it! I don't know, guys. It just seems that the slug and snail are keeping Nod moist and not the pot. Nobody knows that the Queen is gone. It's almost like the movie forgot that Ronan also said... The word of the Queen's passing. We'll travel fast. Only 13 minutes ago. And let this be a reminder to all of you that, yes, we do watch the movies we sent. But he'll help, right? He's like the wise old man of the forest. How has this conversation not already happened during the long journey to this point? Wow, a musical number 47 minutes into a non-musical animated movie. What are the odds? Not like they were looking to pad the runtime or anything. They're just trying to make the most of the serendipitous casting of Steven Tyler, right? I gotta be honest, termites have been a problem. Termites? How about the hundreds of moths flying around? This calls for a celebration! Really seems like the glowworm has taken the death of the beloved queen pretty well, doesn't it? Matter of fact, all these assholes got over that pretty quickly. It's just dusty. Blow it off. I would think this is a line Steven Tyler has told many groupies over the course of his career. If you can hear me now, it means you got to news. This sh looks like a badly edited cutscene from a game on the Nintendo GameCube. Well, that was intense. I gotta read more of these. Do you mean you needed to blow more of these? Because you've skimmed all the scrolls already, but you had MK blow this one, so just looking for a little consistency here. If you want to go home so bad, then why'd you leave? Asking a loaded question and then walking away like a prick. Also, this is a pertinent question, but there's no way Nim would actually know how MK got here. For all intents and purposes, she actually was still home in the front yard when she got into this whole mess. You wanna go somewhere quieter? They're gonna bone, aren't they? I've seen this story once, I've seen it a thousand times. Boy quits his job to start working in an illegal trade with shady characters, girl gets saddled with an unwanted pod and a shrunken down a microscopic version of herself, girl meets boy, boning happens. I can't play the music here to prove it, but I assure you that the song being played right now is Hell by Squirrel Nut Zippers. I have to ask, who the f plays that at a party? Let alone a wake? I don't have any bug and armor handy, do you? 
I know where we can get some. And I won't bother to tell you where right now. You'll just have to wait until we start flying in the direction of my choosing, because I'm determined and pretty and have a fierce f ponytail. These were his baby fangs. And here's the first skin he ever molted. Saving shed things from dead things. When a pod blooms in darkness, it belongs to the darkness. Damn, Mangrove already knew this. Seriously, given how easily he's taken over the forest today, it's a wonder he wasn't able to do it while Queen Bay was alive. Ah, sudden unnecessary gymnastics. It's the Lost World Jurassic Park all over again. He only finds what we want him to find. Except that saddle? Because I'm fairly sure when Nod says, Hey, that's my saddle! He was shocked to see it on display here. You know, as if the Stomper Dad had found something they didn't want him to find. <laughs> I hurt my elbow. <laughs> I get that Nod is f***ing around instead of being focused on the task at hand, but what the hell is wrong with Ronan? There's like hours left until the potential demise of their entire universe and he's got time for a bad stand-up routine? I'm here! Honey, I shrunk the kids again, and also you're dead. Dad! Dad, just turn around! I've never been a tiny bug-sized human hoping for help before, but rather than screaming from a distance, I believe I would actually go to the person and bite their goddamn leg or some shit. What the f*** is waving from 40 feet away on a carpet gonna do? Attract a dog, that's what. F***ing dogs. As fast as these assholes are shown to be, there's no way the dad had time to see something with his naked eye, grab his helmet, put it on, and focus right on Ronan before they're out of the house. Physics according to your own physics movie! I guess I don't mind this whole slow-mo escape sequence, but I am annoyed that it has f*** all to do with the rest of the movie. Dad conveniently passes out and drops the vacuum container that housed MK. Conveniently. Behold, incredibly inconspicuous outfit! Outfits that conceal so many aspects of their obvious humanoid forms. And just in case we really want our enemy to know how great we are at sneaking, our leader will continue to sport his bright green leaf gear. When I get big again, I am so coming back here with a can of bug spray. Premeditated murder. I told you she'd come for me. Of all the storylines I didn't need in this movie, this pervasive slug lust has been the most unpleasant. What would you call someone you've known a long time and always wanted to destroy? Parents? Ooh, so what's the plan here? I'm pretty sure the script asked itself the same thing at this point in the narrative. Having no response, the script sullenly shuffled out the door, went to the nearby bar, downed a shot of gin, picked up a hooker, took him home, and was never heard from again. Getting out is a lot harder than getting in. It is not. Character is overwhelmed by evil ravenous dickheads, but will somehow manage to escape in a movie cliche. Here's a confusing part where they don't send any bats after their enemy, even though the place was packed with them. I would feel bad for this now pilotless bird, but then I remember. It's just a bird. The Balgans aren't far behind. Then why are you all flying this f***ing slow? We single-handedly saved the forest! Considering these two are gastropods, they technically did it with no hands. Yeah. I guess it is. Dude, these two met like four hours ago, tops. Am I really supposed to give a rat's ass about this love connection? Tinder hookups last longer than this. They're not attacking, they're just... Blocking out the moon! Much like a wayward cloud could also block out the moon, and what a tragedy that would be because you can't punch a cloud. <laughs> There's probably less than two minutes left before the moon hits its peak, but this dickhead takes the time to suit all the way up. You know, this feels like an epic battle. Hell, the movie's called Epic but it's seriously just a battle over a tiny patch of land outside a metropolitan area. And I understand that even the smallest of battles are meaningful, and that's probably the tongue-in-cheek purpose of the name, but in reality this translates to the huge fight at the end of Ant-Man, and the result is the toy version of Thomas the Tank Engine getting derailed. Whoa. Whoa. The family that gets concussed together is nonplussed together. Isn't it neat how she instinctively knows where all the cameras are located, despite hating on this hobby for all of her life leading up to this moment? Does it really take that long to just go to the house? They seem like they bada bing bada boom that just a few minutes ago to get the boggin armor. <laughs> Tiny MK managed to wedge this thumbtack in so deeply that it doesn't budge when her dad rages on the map. Mind you, this is the same Tiny MK that couldn't lift a f***ing sword, so who knows how she managed to embed it so deeply that a giant couldn't dislodge it. And let's look at this map. We have a convergence of circles indicating raised terrain, and intersecting of four springs, and someone even drew a triangle there. Now, how would this not have been a place for an obsessed scientist to explore? Not like the tiny people could stop him from setting up his cameras, in which case he'd have easily seen this place shining like a beacon in the night. Okay. One glance at the thumbtack and a map, and you instantly assume that your daughter has been shrunk, is in danger, and needs you to travel as fast as you can to save her. He didn't see the cameras or anything, and he just finished confessing his disbelief to the dog and chucking his shit in the garbage. Maybe he has parental instincts here, but given how clueless he was to his daughter's needs earlier, I find that unlikely. I got your 
And then I carried the thumbtack all the way through my forest run just to prove to you that I got your message. You know, in case it wasn't obvious that I got your message, considering I am standing right here. The pod wouldn't open under the moonlight, but that was because the boggins were blocking the moonlight. But the leaf men have been fighting them for a while now, so there has to be at least a sliver peeping through, right? What if the pod is born under a half moon? Is it half good, half evil? <gasps> just happened. She's being transported back to being a human after all this, but still resists it long enough to get a kiss. Once again, proving the inexplicable power of characters played by Josh Hutcherson. I mean, thank God he had that photograph of his family with him, so that when the deer pops out of the woods, he can compare it to his daughter and rest assured that it was not, in fact, her. It's perfect, Dad. Except- Whoa, whoa, whoa. If it's perfect, there is no except. You don't just sneak in things that need adjusting after saying it's perfect. Hey. Hey! Getting this clear of a video conference connection on this computer in 2013. I was Skyping down the f street in 2013 and there was a constant lag. Gotta go Heimlich my friend out of a slug. You do? As a massive person? Is this wise? I mean, you'd have to be so careful not to obliterate Nod and Mub. Just in case you were wondering if anything interesting happens in the post credit scene, I'll catch you up. There's nothing in the nature pictures other than nature. The sticky note is a list of fancy names for bugs. The dad's name is Bomba and he stuck his ID to the map for some reason. None of these words on the camera manual are helpful. A clear opportunity for a secret code is a sad, simple sequence. Bamba is the third of his name, which he need not reference on his ID, thereby making him hella suspicious. He wrote the same note with fancy bug names twice. Where's the basement? Excuse me? Aren't we gonna see the basement? Something on your mind, kid? It's like I have ESPN or something. Oh, don't grovel. One thing I can't stand is people groveling. Your Majesty! Get to the chopper! Did you start? I don't feel so good. Ah! Oh, gravity works. You get out of the palace, see the world. Is it safe? Sure, do you trust me? Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. We are tonight's entertainment. Black Lord! Michael! Oh god! Oh god! Extreme! <laughs> Hello there. Mob! Grub! Gwubble up a dub dub! On your left. <laughs> <laughs>